When I left school, I went straight and worked in a factory. Uh, we were making, uh, assembling stroboscopes for submarines. And then I worked at London Airport, um, the latter stage of 15. Then I left and went on the road professionally with a band called Mike D and the Jaywalkers. We had about three shows a week. So I became professional at 16 and a half. I joined Screaming or Such and the Savages, dressed up as a savage, which was embarrassing, but we had lots of work. I got most of my so-called showmanship because I'm, I'm an introverted person. On stage, I can be extroverted when I feel like it, as long as I've had a few of these. Screaming or Such, because I used to hide. I'd be on stage, and I used to kind of hide in the wings, and he would come over to me, dressed with his cow horns and his lavatory seat around his neck, and he'd grab me and pull me out the front. Move! And I'd go, you know, because everybody had to move like this, you know, in, in, in time. And that's where I learned that I had to move and be extroverted. And we used to work under Don Arden, who was our agent. Now, he's the father of Sharon Arden, who is Sharon Osborne. And of course, I knew Sharon and David very well from the dad. And he, he had a reputation. I don't know if you know about the reputation of hanging people out of windows. He could frighten people. He was known as like a, a mafia guy, but I never saw it, you know. And of course, Sharon was great, David was great, but there was always that atmosphere of you don't mess with Don. Otherwise, there could be a problem. <laughs> so he said, right, okay, guys, you know. Met him in the office. He said, you're going out with Jerry Lee. Jerry Lee Lewis, oh, wow. And uh, he walks in. And he's got his Macintosh on and he's just walking around. And you can tell he has no interest in us. Goes over to the piano and fiddles around on the stage. You know, and I'm like, we're all standing there. I'm petrified. And so he starts playing. Da 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 da. And he looks at us and we're in. And of course, the bass player, Chaz, says to me, See! All right, see, da 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 da. I'm assuming it's a 12 bar, which it was. Jerry Lee's playing away, you know, singing away. And, uh, and he gets off the piano and he walks over towards me and he goes, Playboy. And I went, <laughs> da, 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 da. and I'm playing a solo and I'm waiting for the whack. <laughs> but it didn't come because I'm playing away and I'm waiting for that. And he went, oh, it's very good, boy, because I was always on his boy. And he puts out his hand, and, and I held a, a vibrato, a tremolo, and I shook his hand, and he couldn't believe that I could shake his hand and keep playing. I was going, do little, 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 thank you, Jerry. Yeah. And he went, oh, very good, boy, and he walked back. We were the best of friends after that. Then we played with Gene Vincent after that. In those days, between 18, well, 17 and 21, I was a practical joker. I loved my catapult. You know what gooseberries are? Right. So I'm in the van one day, and Gene Vincent's in the, in, in the front seat, and uh, I hopped out the back, and this girl was walking by, and he had his window open. So I got my catapult with a gooseberry, and I went whack, and it hit her in the back. And it must have stung a bit, you know, and you could hear it because she had one of those in vogue, fashionable plastic Macs, and it went smack. And of course, he looked at her like that and started laughing. And she went, oh, and she turned around and saw him, and she smacked him across the face because she thought it was him. <laughs> and he's going, I'm sorry, ma'am, I'm sorry, ma'am, whack, you know.